Hey, what's up? It's Mark at alchemist.camp, where we learn Elixir and Phoenix by building things. Today, we're going to start working on a series of JSON API projects, and we'll start pretty simple. So we'll make a new Phoenix app, nixphoenix.new, and we'll call this Firehose, because we hope that our API can handle great quantities of data. Install the dependencies here. Okay, we have all the dependencies installed. I'll switch into that directory and firehose, and then we'll create the database, mixactive.create. We're not going to need that in this episode, but we will next episode, or, or at least a little bit later in the series. So it's a good idea to just take care of that right away. And I'll open a new window for this directory. That way we can see everything in our project at a glance. We'll actually just start up the app, make sure that we have everything, and I'll look at the mix file so that you can see what version of Elixir and Phoenix I'm running. I strongly advise, if you're watching this in the future, use the same version of Phoenix and the same version of Elixir that I am, especially of Phoenix. Uh, there are things that change from time to time in the framework. If you just have the same versions, it'll make things a lot easier for you. All right, so we've got the web server running. Now let's uh, go to localhost 4000 and see what we have. All right, we have our live dashboard. Looks like all is good. First thing we'll do is we'll make a new route for our API. So let's go to the router. In our router, you can see at the top, there's a pipeline defined called browser and another one called API. Normally, uh, or the default pages that are already in your Phoenix app when it's generated, those are going through browser. We scroll down at the bottom, you can see there's a scope slash pipe through browser. And then under that, there's also uh, a dashboard route underneath that. Uh, these are HTML pages and they handle sessions. Uh, there are layouts. There are some security related features. We don't have any of that with a JSON API. All we're going to do is just have a single plug in this pipeline accepts JSON and we'll uncomment this scope for an API that was automatically generated. And we'll add a route there called uh, let's see, we'll just call it roll, and that will be for uh, returning the results of die rolls. Our API will just roll a die and return a number. So we'll, we'll uh, add a get here, roll, and that's going to use a roll controller and an index action. This controller doesn't exist yet, so if we were to go to localhost 4000 api slash roll uh, we'll get an error since the controller is undefined let's take a look at our existing controller for pages you can see we've got a really simple controller that has the index defined here that that shows our our base page we're going to make a really similar looking controller for die rolls it'll be called roll underscore controller ex and like the other module this will be under our uh, name of our application which is firehose uh, firehose web dot role controller and then we need to use uh, a macro to make it a controller so we use firehose web and controller this macro here pulls in a bunch of functionality from our firehose underscore web file. Uh, you can see all of this that's in controller gets pulled in. So basically, if we uh, if we have that use firehose web controller, that has the same effect as adding these lines to the module. Uh, and this uses another macro that's in Phoenix. So we'll basically uh, pull in a bunch of stuff that makes it controller -y. Don't need to get too far into it here. And next, we need a function that matches the name of the action passed in from the router. Looking back at the router, the action we're passing in is called index. So we've got to name a function index. And the first argument is going to be a con, just like it is in uh, any other 
Phoenix controller. And then the second one is parameters. We're not passing any parameters in from the router, so we don't need anything there. And then we need to render the on and the name of the template, which we'll just call index.json and that'll be that. Okay, this will still not work because we don't have uh, that template, but we get a different error message. So the render is undefined. And then to render this, we'll need to have a render function. And we could just use a template uh, as we already have some templates in our template directory, we have templates for pages. Um, you can do uh, basically an index.json.eex. However, uh, that's not really the, the standard happy path when working with JSON. The, the standard path is to go with functions in our view file. So we'll make a view, which we need in any case, and then we'll put all the logic in there. Once again, you can see we have this very minimal page view. Um, the page view is doing nothing except bringing in the macro, but we're going to need a little bit more than that in our version because we're going to define a render function for our JSON. So we'll call this uh, fire, or we'll call this roll view.ex. This is firehose web dot roll view. And we're going to use firehose web view to make this a view. Uh, now we need to define a render function since we're not going to use a separate template. And it's going to be called render and it'll be for uh, index.json and then some kind of data coming in in the assigns. Um, we'll just leave this commented out for now and hard code a response in. And whatever request comes in, we'll just say uh, status OK, and roll is going to be 4. Save that. And now you can see we have a roll. You can reload the page, and it's always going to be 4. OK, how do we get something that's a little bit more dynamic? Let's go back to our roll controller. And we'll use a random function to do it. So the number is going to be equal to... Uh, rand.uniform, which is a function that generates uh, a random number of uniform distribution from uh, basically from one up to the number we put in. So we'll do rand uniform six. Actually, let me just give an example of this in the console. So uh, rand.uniform six. Now let's do that 50 times for variable name we don't care about, 1 and 50, do rand uniform 6, and you can see we did a whole bunch of die rolls, and these are all in the range that we want, they're all 1 to 6. So that's how we'll get our number, and then status we're just going to fill in in the function. So our number is number, actually let's see, is that one? Yeah, we'll do it like that. So uh, I'll call it roll is number. This will go into the assigns. Then in our role view, we have some data there and we can pattern match the data. We'll just see if there's a role and there's a number and we'll add in a requirement that that number is an integer. When is integer number? Then we'll output status is okay and the value of the number. We'll go back to our browser. And now, as I reload it, you can see we're getting different roles. All right, and now let's uh, make another version of this function for when the input's not valid. So this will be just a, a one-liner and render still gonna be index.json. However, instead of matching a roll number when the number is an integer, we'll just put in this, uh, this catch-all or any other kind of input we might have gotten. And in that case, we'll respond with uh, status error, and that's all. So we're not going to see that yet because our input is valid. 
but we'll just break our roll controller really quickly and we can see that happen. So instead of uh, taking the num, let's just pass in force. And now you can see we get an error as we should. All right, so this is a pretty trivial example, but we have successfully built our first API. It returns die rolls. And just for the fun of it, let's actually curl that from the command line as well. So curl localhost 4000 API roll. And there we go, getting some different die rolls. Okay, that's it for today. See you next time.